Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to the Hearthstone Tournament Recap. Talking about the top decks, talking about the top players, and the state of the metagame for this week's tournaments. So, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? On to the top players from the North American region. We had from Mana Grind's Friday Night Swiss Tournament, Hosty from Team DKMR. Then from top deck, the winner of that was MYM Ignite. Uh, on the Zotec side of things, we had Mana Grind Z Rusher, and I am aware that that is from last week's Zotec and not from this week's. Or Zotac. I keep calling it Zotec. Anyway, I'm aware it's from last week's Zotac instead of this week's Zotac, and the reason I'm doing that is because I get deck lists from their Hall of Fame thing, and that updates on Thursday or Friday or something. So I'm always going to be a week behind the Zotac stuff. But anyway. And then lastly, from the NESL Preseason Cup, we had Unjust. So, I'm going to be going over two decks from the NA and two decks from the EU. And before I go over each one, I'll say what format it was played in, because that can be relevant in terms of deck choice. So, from the uh, Mattergrind Friday Night Swiss Tournament, we had DKMR Hosty, who was playing a Rogue Miracle deck. Now, this uh, Miracle deck came from the Swiss format, which is no sideboarding and uh, best of one in Swiss, best of three in a top cup, which is top 16 usually. So no sideboarding, no other deck, just this one. So the actual Miracle Rogue list, it's nothing we haven't seen before in terms of spells. The spells are all pretty normal. We've got the, the one fan, one conceal, one flurry instead of two, although that has been coming up a bit more recently. Only one cold blood, because if you get two, it's pretty useless. So basically, it's still what we all know as Miracle. Play Gadgetan, Machine Gun out spells, and then Lero combo them to death with Shadow Steps. However, the interesting thing about this particular list is we have one Earthen Ring Farseer. Some have been playing two, some haven't been. One Azure Drake. Again, some have been playing two, some haven't been. And then we have two Loot Hoarders instead of Acolyte of Pain or any other sort of early draw engine. We've seen even Cold Light Oracles, things like that. We've seen some crazy, crazy stuff in the draw engine types of things, but in this case we have the Loot Hoarder. So very, very interesting Miracle Rogue variation in terms of minions from Hosty. Now onto the Zotac tournament. Uh, we're going to be going over Z Rusher from Mana Grind. Uh, we're going to be going over his Warlock list. Now, keep in mind that the Zotac tournaments are very close to BlizzCon format. So, when you... You can basically... You can switch decks, and when you lose, you switch a deck. So, in this case, I went... Decided to go over his Warlock list, because he also had a Miracle. But, it's two Miracles in a row. Not exactly that interesting. So, on to Handlock. Now, Handlock is all about putting out really, really large minions and giving them taunt and letting them sort of end the game quickly in a couple of turns once you get to late game. So, in terms of minions, we do have the standard Giants, Watchers, Defenders, and uh, some Furies with Twilight Drakes, that's all normal. Pretty standard in general. Now, the interesting thing about this deck, however, is we're playing one Alex Straza, no Draxis, but just one Alex Straza for the health reset. And also only one Mortal Coil in favor of a Shadow Bolt to deal with things like Unbound Elemental, Frothing Berserker, even things like Feral Spirit Tokens if they've been buffed. There's a lot of different targets for this kind of thing. Other interesting addition is that, like some of the other lists that I've been over in the past, it's been running two Hellfire, one Shadow Flame instead of two Shadow Flame, one Hellfire. It's a little worse against aggro because it hurts you as well, but it's stronger against control because you don't need to have a minion on the board all the time. So it's it's more reliable, but it does hurt yourself. So anyway, onto the EU side of things. There wasn't a uh, Swiss tournament this week, or there was, but it was cancelled because of uh, Blizzard problems. So I'm going to start with the Top Deck tournament. Now, Top Deck EU was won by a teammate of mine, actually, Crispy from the Ace Breakers. Zotek was won by Zotek again. This is going to be like the obligatory typo, isn't it? How many times do I call Zotek Zotek in the average video? Anyway, from the Zotek Karstone EU Cup, we had another Mana Grind team member won the EU from uh, Kalento in this particular case. Which is interesting, so we had a week where a Mana Grind team member won both the EU and the NA. And then for the ESL 1 on 1 Cup we had White Powder. So generally in terms of uh, sort of the, the number one place, 
most of the players winning them are either on teams or being picked up by teams rather quickly. So it is interesting to see when someone actually wins a tournament and isn't on a team, but I bet that they're probably going to be on one soon because a lot of teams are trying to get bigger. And I wouldn't be surprised if, say, White Powder, for example, was picked up because he won the ESL. Anyway, moving on to Chris B's deck from the Top Deck EU tournament. He was playing Token Druid. Now, Token Druid, it's a list that we've seen before, but it's not that common. It's a mid rangey it's an aggro mid rangey deck. It's a very, very interesting blend. What the game plan is, is you have two different openings. You can either go early minions and rush them down, or you can play mid rangey and then have massive burst damage to kill them out of nowhere. Now, the deck accomplishes this by using token cards like Violet Teacher, as well as Harvest Golem, and even things like Loot Hoarder to sustain your cards while playing threats, and Argent Squire because it just stays there and can be buffed a bunch. You get a lot of your burst damage from things like Power of the Wild and the two Savage Roars, as well as Leroy Jenkins. Now, the interesting things about this particular list is we have one Blood Mage, as opposed to Loot Hoarder, as opposed to two different Loot Hoarders. We only have one Azure Drake, instead we're playing a Blood Knight as a substitute. And in terms of spells, we have one Claw. Now, the one Claw is a bit debatable depending on who you ask. I quite like it personally, but some people do play Mark of the Wild or just No Claw or even Moonfires with uh, Gadgets and I have seen a lot of variations of this deck. But this particular one was very, very successful, and I hope to see more of Token Druids in the future. On to the last deck we're going to be going over today. Zotac, Hearthstone EU Cup, we're going over... Kalento's Shaman list. Now keep in mind this is from BlizzCon format, this is one of the three decks he actually played. Now his Shaman midrange list is kind of a mix of old and new. The old parts of it that we're used to, we have Unbound Elemental, Alakir, Fire Elementals, all the cheap spells, things like that. But then the interesting new stuff is when you have one Unbound Elemental, a Stormforged Axe, a Ragnaros, two Argent Commanders along with the Fire Elementals, really top heavy in this deck, but no Doom Hammer. It's sort of cutting back on the overload a bit in favor of higher drops, that's why it's only playing the one Unbound. Also playing the one Manatide Totem in favor of Gadget, instead of a Gadgetan Auctioneer because the Gadgetan would just make the curve too high in general. If you're going to play two Azura Drakes and also all the other high drops, you can't really afford to play Gadget and Auctioneer. Your curve is going to be way too high and it's going to be really awkward with any overload you still have. Not to mention it encourages you to play a bunch of spells and if you do that, you can't play your six drops. As for the actual spells, the suite is pretty much normal. We've got two Rockbiter weapons for Alakir, which is basic removal. Feral Spirits, Lightning Storm, Earthshock, Lightning Bolt, Hex. This is all normal. The interesting bits come in the actual minion section. The Ragnaros, though, is something very interesting. Ragnaros, especially in Shaman, was never that common. And now he sort of shows up in a, a winning deck. Even with all the big game hunters around, it's probably because of the 8 damage he does instantly. It's like a secondary Alakir that doesn't require Rockbiter, but can't be directed. So a, kind of a weird second Alakir if you look at it that way. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please throw a like on this video and subscribe. If you have any feedback on the new style or anything, put it in the comment section below. If you want to come chat to me, I do spend a lot of time on Man of Grind's TeamSpeak. I'll put the TeamSpeak address in the description. But as for now, this has been Jotto, signing off.